Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Civil War, and in this video we are actually going to go ahead and play the Battle of Gaines Mill. Gaines Mill is an interesting fight in that it's the first of the battles where you really have some tactical or strategic decisions that you have to make at the start of the battle, before the battle even begins. You have to decide where you're going to deploy your forces, and where your real effort should be. It's a really interesting fight where kind of the core setup where you have multiple cores as a commander of a force really gets tested for the first time. Bull Run, you basically just get deployed where you get deployed. Gaines Mill, things start to change. Even Shiloh, it's kind of like, all right, you get half of your own forces, you get half of the computer sort of uh, default OOB. But by the time Gaines Mill comes around, the battles really become your own. You stop relying on forces that are not part of your core units. I think the game figures now you have enough time to have built up a strong enough force to uh, rely on yourself rather than sort of AI starter units and now your real core comes into its own and you have to make some general type decisions on where you want to deploy your forces. It's really interesting and um, this is taken from a live stream that I did when the game first came out and um, yeah, so this is from a live stream when the game first came out. I'm going to jump back into the live stream audio for this fight. It's a little bit longer. It's about 45 minutes. So I hope you guys don't get turned off by that. I didn't want to split it into two parts. I thought that would be a little bit um, not frustrating, but it just wouldn't flow as well if I broke it up. So this is one longer video and uh, I'll meet you guys back up the end and I hope you enjoy. So enemy army is... Intelligence has 21,000 men. That's not too bad. But you can sense that we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. And here's where that sense of dread or trouble comes. Is the fact that we can deploy up to 50 brigades if we want. We don't have 50 brigades to deploy. We have half of that. And they're not even all full strength. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reorganize my, uh, my force a little bit for the Battle of Gaines Mill. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to take, um, I think we'll actually, instead of having a concentrated, well, I like the idea of a concentrated battery. Uh, we've got a division of 8,000. We'll take these guys into the second core, so. Okay, so we'll have a slightly understrength first division of the second core, and then we'll have these troops, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess that more evenly distributes things, I think. Um, I really wish I could, you know, equip some of these guys. Actually, wait a minute. What's our Lorenz situation? We've got 1,500 Lorenzes, right? Oh, no, they're in the shop. We don't have anything in the armory. Oh, well. All right, we can't do anything then, so... Unless any of these understrength units have weapons that we can upgrade. Which actually these guys do, so we can strengthen these. Not by much. But hey, we can add an extra hundred men. Every man counts, so they say. Um, yeah, we've got supply for both cores. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll fight the Battle of Gaines Mill. As I've already said. So you can see here in deploying our force, we kind of have a choice. It's an interesting option that I haven't seen in battles before. We can go with a frontal attack, or we can go with a flank right. Um, I think the idea is you want some troops in the front to kind of pin the enemy, and that allows you to come around their flank. The problem is because both of our cores are pretty weak, our best bet might be to concentrate them. If I bring one around on the right flank, we do risk having it isolated and destroyed by itself. So I'm wondering if just a full-on frontal attack all by itself might not be the best way to go. Unless the AI gives us some additional troops. But it doesn't look like it. So we could also go with a full-on flank attack. But I don't know what that does if we don't put any troops on the frontal attack. Do we really gain any benefit by going just for the flank? Hmm. We could go with the smaller core to hold, but there's no way in hell they're going to hold. Yeah. 
they do have good barricades. I just will. Uh, will there really be any impact? Like, are we? Are we? By not going full on for the flank attack, like if we did this, what would the negative be? That they can shift their forces and face us? Well, I mean, they're going to be able to do that. These three brigades aren't going to be able to hold them in position. That's my concern. But it seems like the general consensus is with this weaker core hold and flank and attack with our stronger core. So that's what we're going to do. I can't spend Renown. I don't have enough Renown. So I only have 23 Renown, and the cheapest thing spending Renown that you have is 5, and you have to have above 20 to spend. So there's nothing I can spend to get better guns, guys. Sorry. Ye yeah, boy, we did. You're probably right. But anyway, we're going to go get started. Union forces that consisted, uh, that consisted the right flank of McClellan's army have retreated through Gaines Mill. Really? They already retreated? General Porter now holds a defensive line along Botswin Creek. Those are the barricades there you can see. Our plan is to suppress and destroy the Union right flank is now a very critical point. The main bulk of our forces are expected voices to arrive from the northwest. Man, this is a big battlefield. A portion of our army is ordered to maneuver to the east to flank the Federals. We must coordinate our attacks from multiple directions and pass through the Union defenses. Then continue south and threat the Union army. The Yankees will surely reinforce the area with more troops coming from this direction, so act with caution, General. We're moving into attack position. It is advised to carefully advance up this ridge, clear roads of enemy skirmishers, and maintain a defensive line until the rest of our reinforcements arrive. General attack only if practical. The Union lines behind Botswana Creek. Their position is strong. Good luck. Okay. Well, this is our under strength core. Under General Braxton Bragg with their supply chain. That's all we get to start. So if we pause, let's see here. Enemy positions are here. Flank attack will have to come in here. So I think the easy answer is to just advance to this ridge line and kind of hold there. Now there could be federal skirmishers for sure. We have our own skirmisher designated unit. Okay, so we're going to just kind of issue orders manually rather than giving... Um, You can give orders by division, but we're not going to do that. Actually, why don't I just do this? I'm assuming they'll take the best route, right? And then we'll have our skirmishers advance to the front. Brag and supplies in tow. Okay. Union secured Botswana Woods. So I assume that's here. Um, make sure we keep a close eye on Bragg. Last thing I want him to do is to charge into some volley and get himself killed. Why isn't Reed moving? I really wish there was a attached to road command, like something. First of all, the fact that they're riding directly is. Oh, get out of there. Out. Out. Okay, that's why we have these YouTube irregular skirmishers here. Why aren't you hitting anything? Worthless skirmishers. The 
They must have better, better weapons than us. There appear to be multiple enemy skirmishers. I don't really want to wear my guys out, but... I'm gonna do it. Why are there enemy supplies all the way up here? Deploy skirmishers. Okay, this is very much like a Gettysburg type, you know, small raggedy band resists you across the way as you move into position or something or other. Definitely want to stay somewhat shielded from artillery fire. Can we catch up with the supplies, maybe? I doubt it, but we can try. Jeez. Okay. Stupid federal skirmishers. This is annoying. We're not going to capture Botswana or Woods or Hill. Not going to happen. Most I'll probably do is set these troops up in this wood line somewhere where maybe we get a line of sight on their main their main body and maybe we shift a little bit over to the right to kind of threaten this position so that when our flank attack comes in we can hit him from the front and the flank and actually I think that's a good idea so that's exactly what we're going to do I wish I could see where this artillery was coming in from. Send some skirmishers out on both of these units to kind of clear our front a bit. Okay, so you can see here the enemy line. Don't go so close. Strong federal position all along these earthworks. Again, you can see that they're in these earthworks. And this actually mirrors reality as well. Historically, the uh, Union did have their flank more or less in the air to... So we will advance on their front once our soldiers come in on the flank. Move Bragg over there now. Move the Irish Brigade this way. So this is all preamble, right guys? I mean, this is not in any way any sort of main effort.
Although they definitely are bleeding us more than I would like. I'd prefer to clean these skirmishers out and not be losing like two, three hundred men in my brigades that may need be needed later. I'm perfectly fine with my skirmisher unit losing heavy casualties. That's what they're there for. Damn skirmishers. There you go. Clearing the woods to the federal front. You're saying I can't afford the skirmishers? Like, I shouldn't have them? I should attach them to the main unit? Or I can't afford the casualties? It certainly beats attacking head-on. And if I... The problem is if I charge them with my regular infantry, I risk my infantry straying into the line of fire of the main enemy line, which their line of fire almost goes to where these federal blue coats are right now. So if I were to charge them, they'd be in range of the main federal line, and I'd lose a lot more men from a mistimed charge there than I would, uh, you know... Anything else? I'm gonna move Reed into these woods now that we've cleared these skirmishers a bit. Move the supply wagon over here. Keep the skirmishers on our flank. Move the Irish Brigade over here. I do worry that I'm not pinning these guys enough. Like, they could easily pull out of their fortifications to come advance forward and try and flank us. Um, but I'm hoping the AI isn't that clever. Yeah, cavalry definitely would have been useful in this ba for this core. If I think about it, I should have gone back and reorganized my core based on what I intended to do. So if I wanted these guys to be the frontal attack, I should have assigned the cavalry to that rather than the flanking force. Of course, the flanking force could, you know, the cavalry could prove useful as well if there's any federal skirmishers guarding their flank. So we're going to kind of stick in these woods, get them into these woods, stick in these woods, kind of use it for cover, and then once our flanking attack does come this way, we'll advance these guys forward um, and hopefully prevent the Yankees from being able to adjust their flank. Although we are going to be exposing our flank to enemy artillery fire that's going to enfilade us as we move forward, or enfilade us as we move down this slope. Already a little bit exposed, you can see here. A little bit of cover. Hopefully they, the Yankees are wasting their ammo on us. Marsh's brigade did okay. Didn't lose anyone. Inflicted 57 casualties. Uh, the other two brigades lost... Holy crap. We lost over 500 men. About 500 men in the Irish brigade. Damn. That's not great. I don't really care about my irregular skirmishers. They're more or less going to be providing flank security for when we advance. That's it. I'm sure the I'm sure the Federals will get reinforcements, but there's not much we can do about that, right? I certainly don't have the troops in place right now. Well, 
Well, I'm not going to launch the actual frontal attack until our flanking forces arrive. Here's the thing. If they turn to face our flanking force, then we can still hit them in the flank by using these guys over here. They won't be as strong, but theoretically we can do it. I don't have much I can scout with them, I and I've got line of sight. There may be a line of skirmishers between us and them, but I don't. They they won't have anything able to stop you know five thousand men coming down on them. That's my thought anyway. I don't want to lose more casualties just to scout something out before my main attack is even ready. More of our troops are entering the battlefield. Be really nice if you had some, you know, non-core units. We wait our flanking force to arrive in about an hour from this road. Damn it, I would have thought they were coming now. General's advised to reserve our troops and attack all together with the final reinforcements, but of course you made to think differently. Uh-oh. What are the Yankees doing? What are they doing? Hmm. Kind of pulled out of their defensive works, right? So I don't know quite what the Yankees are doing other than it seems they probably are shifting troops to deal with a potential danger to their flank. They've kind of unglued them from this line. This is a losing proposition. Really, they're in range all the way out there? I'm not going to attack their barricade. I mean, I'm well aware they're in their barricades. Oh, well, yeah, I, okay, never mind. Come on, guys. I need my flanking forces. Be more than welcome if you guys want to advance on me if you think I'm weak. I'd be happy to deal with that engagement. You need a bigger army, though, at this point. And that's the frustrating thing, is that it seems like you get stuck in this sort of fatal funnel where it's like you keep fighting and you haven't lost, but it kind of feels like you probably have already lost. Even though you haven't really lost, you've kind of lost.
I'm going to shift my line this way a little bit. Okay, so they definitely have some skirmishers out. Scout a little bit more. Sorry, there's not a lot going on right now, guys. I am actually think I'm going to start the attack from the left first, or the right first. Once my other forces arrive on the field, and then I will... Federal Cavalry. Great. How am I in range? That's a ways away. Shoot! Well, that was stupid. Those skirmishers are dead. Thanks, guys. You told me to scout out with my skirmishers. I don't have to cross over the river to meet the flank attack. So what do I have to do to draw this battle? Can I just sit back and not attack? Will that draw it? Hmm. So they're already moving brigades to their right, it looks like. Which doesn't bode well for us. But maybe they'll use all their artillery ammunition up. We're ready to attack the Union flank, but we start way the fuck away. <laughs> Lovely. Let's see here. First Corps, First Division. First Division goes here. Second division is apparently one unit. Just one unit, really? That's all I put in the second division. I don't think that's true. Oh, that, wait, are not all of our forces on the field? Yeah, we don't... This isn't our entire force. Is there a reason not everybody shows up? Does that happen? That's not our entire force. Lovely. Okay, well, good to know that only a portion of our troops showed up. Frickin' idiots. It's just like the actual, uh, the actual battle. We've got 9,000 men on the field. Federals have like 20,000. Well, this will suck. We don't have our cavalry either. In reality, we have one division and one brigade, and that's it.
All right, guys, this may be ugly. Box on the top right. Draw. At least one must be fulfilled. Hold. At least 10% more casualties than the enemy. I'm assuming that means inflict 10% more than they do on us. And take either Botswan Woods or Hill. That's kind of confusing. Why are there two draw conditions? Well, McGee Hill. Okay. Alright. And the enemy's aware of our movements because we just saw their cavalry, and we have none. I'm increasingly thinking we should just move all of our forces over to the flank. I don't feel like we're really pinning anyone with the way we're at right now. I don't know. We'll see. Did our character get swallowed up by cavalry? Yep, our character was swallowed up by enemy cavalry, so there goes our core commander. He's wounded or captured or something. Lovely. <sighs> Alright, we'll get into position, guys, so we can march you off to your deaths. I don't even have any artillery. All right, guys, moving forward. Yeah, they stole me. Our artillery's gone. We never even had it on this battlefield. Their troops are still in position. Holy crap. Stop moving. That foreign legion's not going to last long. Alright guys, get into position. I know you guys hate it when I run because we get our troops out of shape, but this... Legion won't stand here long under this kind of withering fire, so we're going to have to try and turn their flank quickly. There's probably something back here, but... We're going to detach some skirmishers, send them up to this observation point. You can see here this Legion fell back. Observation. <sighs> Break their defenses before nightfall. Every single unit of our attacking force is now present on the battlefield. So I guess we get more reinforcements. 
Before the end of the day, we must push the Union south of those ridges. Prepare, prepare for the final assault. So, all of our troops are not on the battlefield. Um, that's nice. It's nice to say. It's not accurate. Um, I'm sure enemy will counterattack here or something. Either that or we just have to keep going toward them. Which is going to suck attacking across this open ground. Um, yeah. So we are behind them. Which is nice, but again... We're going to be attacking across open ground against enemy artillery with phenomenal lines of sight. The one thing that's kind of annoying with this game, not the, I mean, there are a few things, but one thing that really is annoying with this game is the fact that it doesn't seem like charging batteries, you don't overwhelm them as easily as you should. If we charge this battery and we outnumber it 10 to 1, we should overwhelm it, right? So, like, I should be able to charge, and then the second we start meleeing with them, they should more or less be gone, or dead, or something. And yes, I know I've still got my other brigades over there. I'll send them forward very shortly, actually. It doesn't look like they're launching any kind of counterattack on the hill. I'm leaving one brigade here to make sure that they don't, you know, no, no funny business, if you will. But that battery should be dead already, you know? They shouldn't be, oh, we're actually going to fight really well. Forwards, man, for God's sakes, forwards. At least there's some consternation and confusion over here. I gotta leave one on the objective, and I've gotta leave one to kind of guard my flank. We did wipe out that artillery battery, which is nice. You can see they're moving some reinforcements north here. So it does seem like we've pushed them a little bit. We've at least we've threatened their flank, that's for sure. They are bringing substantial reinforcements to bear. And we're going to be flanked here very shortly ourselves on our left. Great, more troops. Alright, so it looks like we've seriously damaged another... Wait, why are these guys do going way up there? Ugh. Did I leave this back brigade out there? Did I not bring him forward? Or did they get pushed back? It can't be this easy, right? There have to be substantial reinforcements if there's on the way. We need to 
push Bartlett back here. Run him between the two brigades. I'm sure these sharpshooters are going to run around our flank. We'll deal with that when the situation arises. And there you go, we got Reed coming up here down the federal flank. Marsh is reforming a bit. At least we still have Bragg as far as a commander's concerned. I can't believe that it's worked this easily. This can't be it, right? Like, it, they can't be that easy to beat. Granted, <laughs> I'm still heavily outnumbered. These guys could move a little bit quicker, too. That would sure be nice. Taking their sweet time to get down here. Get our supply wagon down there. I think these guys are retreating. I just don't know where they're going. This is... I know I'm not talking much, guys. I'm sorry about that. I am, the Taking the last objective will definitely be hard. That's my sense. But I'm hoping we've done enough to at least gain a draw. Now, I suppose the risk here is if you don't do enough to get a decisive victory, and then you lose Malvern Hill, which is almost a certainty, I believe, in the next battle, then, uh, you know, that can complicate matters, to say the least. Rear flanked. Wouldn't take much to push me back right now either. Now that they've they have reformed their line, so we bent it back. Wouldn't say we'd. I mean, there's still 40 minutes to go here, and they're actually starting to firm up a bit. Stonewall firing into their flank. They're still anchored to these lines, which is good for us. So they've definitely stopped the impetus of our attack to some extent. Although, why these guys are still in these positions, I don't know. You'd think Pratt would be firing volleys into the flank of Buchanan there. Longstreet tactics. I mean, Longstreet did attack at Malvern Hill. He actually thought it was a you know, it was a worthwhile attempt, which is interesting with the way we kind of think about Longstreet today. I'm not attacking until these reinforcements arrive. Once they do, I'll organize something. I think this one will focus more along going up the up the trench line, because while they've formed up along this wood line, their left seems a little bit exposed still. And 
And the fact that they're still attached to these earthworks here, they're, you can tell they're still glued to them. Which makes them very vulnerable. You can see they're taking pretty heavy casualties. There you go, we just broke another federal brigade because they hung on to their earthworks. Where are they going? Yeah, don't stand in the open and fight against them by yourself. That's a bad idea. That's a losing tactic. Keeping the orphan brigade over here again, I know it's a good brigade that we're... Actually, it might not be a bad idea to pull these guys out. They've, they've lost so heavily. Maybe what we do is we pull the, uh, f we'll pull marshes out once that volley's done. No, 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 run. This way. Oh, God. I just got that brigade destroyed. And then we bring the orphan brigade forward, hoping that the enemy doesn't launch any serious attacks, and we kind of come down their flank. I don't think we have time. See, what's the point of these f flanking forces arriving? There's no... I guess I could have sprinted them, but there's no way they're going to get there in time. Man, we lost heavy casualties here. Damn. That's a tough battery. No, 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 don't. Come on, just shoot them. I didn't want an actual melee. It seems to be a common thing. The AI always says, hey, you wanna... You wanna melee? And I'm like, no. No, I don't. It's like, oh, you wanna melee? Let's melee. Oh god, there's no way we're taking this objective. We're just throwing lives away at this point. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Got a nice volley off it, right into him though, at point blank range. Victory! Hurrah! We won! Okay, so the enemy lost 5,000 men. We lost more men, actually. Um, surprisingly, although they lost 14 guns, we didn't lose anything. Um, and we took two of the three objectives, including the flanking objective. Uh, Gabriel Pratt was wounded. He's the only one. The rest got some perks. Goods. We captured some 700 more of those really good Springfields. And we captured four artillery pieces, some Sharps rifles, and some Colts. So, overall, a nice little haul there. Um, I would have hoped I got more guns by routing those two batteries, but it is what it is. It's a victory, guys. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and end the stream here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, there you saw Gaines Mill, a victory for our cause, and we were able to win in spite of some serious challenges that we had to overcome. We were definitely heavily outnumbered. The enemy was in very strong positions, and you can see, at least in this fight, that flanking maneuver was critical, although you do need to make sure that you're also pinning the enemy to their positions. So not only did the flanking maneuver end up paying off and we were, ending, we were able to end up winning a battle, but uh, also the um, you know the the activity by the initial forces on the frontal attack were successful in pinning the enemy to their position without losing too much in the way of troops. So all in all, things went well, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, you guys. This is the historical gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.